Hello, folks. <laughs> I just realised I said everything would go without a hitch and realised I hadn't unmuted the microphone. There we go. Do you know what I need? I reckon I need somebody who's going to kind of do the technical side of this because while you're trying to talk to a, an audience and I'm all the technical stuff going on, it's absolutely impossible. Anyway, welcome once again to Facebook Live with Robin Thompson from Red Fez. It's good to have you with us this evening. And although it's a little bit cooler and a little bit wetter than it has been this week, it's still not bad really, isn't it? It's still quite a nice day. So I hope you've had a good day. Um, we've had a really busy week, lots of things going on, um, which does mean we've ended up with quite a number of questions which we can look at this week as well. In fact, uh, just as I'm talking, I'm just seeing the message coming through. There's no sound. Ha ha. Yes, <laughs> indeed. It's ironic. I know, I know. So yeah, so we have a number of questions this week. So here's what we're going to be looking at. Um, we are going to be looking at why do emails I send get rejected? Yeah, have you ever been in that situation? You send an email and it just comes straight back. Um, we'll be having a look at the reasons why that could be. So why does my inkjet printer keep clogging up? How about that one? You know when you've got a really important document to print, you go and click on it and it just doesn't work. That's a pain as well. And then should I now switch to the Edge browser from Chrome? Good question indeed. Should you be using Edge instead of Chrome or indeed any other browser? So that's what we're going to be looking at tonight. Obviously, please do get your questions in the chat box. I've got that open so I'll be able to see those and we'll be able to respond to those um, as you type them in. And obviously any other comments that you've got as well, uh, sarcastic or humorous or otherwise, that's absolutely fine. Very much like this to be interactive. So please do make sure that you make some comments. OK, so let's get started with this first question. Why do emails I send get rejected? So you know that kind of situation. You spend ages composing the email, you send it off, and straight away you get a bounce back message in Outlook or whatever email client you use to say email cannot be sent. Now there can be quite a number of reasons for this. The reasons why emails might get rejected is quite complex okay now the first thing could be have you actually sent it to the right email address i know it's the obvious one it's like checking have you got it plugged in um but it can happen and some names can be you know it's very easy to mistype them or get things the wrong way around so check that one first um one of the uh, issues that you could have is that your email domain could be on a spam list we've seen that one before as well, it depends on where you're sending it from. If you're sending it from uh, Gmail or Hotmail or something like that, it's unlikely that that's going to be on a spam list. But they certainly do have quite extensive spam lists. So sending to some of the big email um, companies can be potentially problematic if your email isn't set up correctly. So that's always worthwhile checking. So if it's a company one or if it's your business, uh, and you're having trouble sending emails, you do need to be having a chat with your email provider or your IT provider, whoever looks at those for you, and see whether your domain has ended up being uh, registered on a spam list or a blacklist or something like that. And that can be a problem for sending emails through as well. Um, we did have an interesting one where we tried to send an email through to a client and it kept bouncing back. And the reason why it kept bouncing back was because we got their domain registered on exactly the same server uh, that we were sending emails from. So it was, wasn't was actually sending the email out onto the internet. It was looking on our server, not finding the recipient and sending us a bounce back message. So, <laughs> and it took a while to work out that that's what was going on. So there can be all sorts of reasons why emails can get rejected. Not an easy one to answer. Uh, but that's the thing I would certainly check is, have you got the information correct? And the other thing is, you just the, the problem could be at your end rather than at their end. So if you've established that they seem to be working okay, um, then you need to be looking at your end. The other thing you can do as well to kind of troubleshoot this a little bit is try sending the, the same email to the same address from a different email address. So if you do have a Gmail or a Hotmail or something like that, they can be quite useful because normally there aren't general issues sending those. So if that sends... Um, then the chances are it's at your end. If it doesn't send, then the chances are the problem is at the recipient's end. So there we go. That's why your emails that you send can sometimes get rejected. Okay, next question. I'm going to go on to the uh, inkjet printer question. Why does my inkjet printer clog up? Do you know what? Inkjet printers are one of the most frustrating things 
I ever have to deal with. I absolutely hate printers. And generally, as a rule, we at Redfez don't support printers. We certainly don't repair printers. We'll, have, we'll repair computers, we'll repair laptops, and we'll have a go at all sorts of stuff. But printers, Ugh. I hate them. Um, the, the reason why injects clog up is usually through underuse. If you don't use them, the ink dries out. And that's why they clog up. They're designed to have a constant stream of ink uh, going through those cartridges and through the print heads, which are actually on the cartridges. So really, you need to be printed at least once a week. You can find if you leave it a couple of weeks and you go to print, it's, the quality is rubbish. Um, and no amount of cleaning seems to sort it out. It's just because you've got dried ink in there and it's just not going to go anywhere. And the only real solution is to get new ink cartridges. Now, I've even got to the point sometimes with them where even new ink cartridges don't work because there's dried ink in the whole mechanism. So the thing with an inkjet printer is you must keep using it. So just print something out at least once a week, get into the habit of doing that. Otherwise, you will have problems. Um, or better still, uh, get a laser printer. <laughs> the price of laser printers has come down quite a bit now. You can get monochrome laser printers for not a lot of money, 40, 50 quid. Because um, uh, people always go, oh, I've looked at the prices of the toner and it's expensive. And yes, it is. The price of a toner is more expensive than the price of an ink cartridge. But the point is the toner lasts longer. You know, you, you, you'll get thousands of copies out of your toner. You will not get thousands of copies um, out of your inkjet cartridges. So particularly if you're running a business, a laser print is definitely the way to go. And actually for most domestic stuff, unless you're printing out photographs. And then I always say, why are you printing out photographs? Don't print out your photographs. The reason why you shouldn't print out your photographs is because, again, the inks will fade over time. So you print it out, and then after a couple of years, it looks rubbish. If you want hard copies of your photos, the best thing to do is to send them off to companies that will properly uh, develop them um, like an old photograph, like the way it used to be in the analog days. Well, I say develop them, they, it actually gets properly printed on photo paper. Um, but the process is very much um, very similar to the way the old analog photos used to be developed. So they're proper photographs and they will retain their quality for much, much longer. So that's the way to do it. Um, so don't use your printer for printing out photos at all. And use your printer for printing out documents. That is the best thing. Uh, but I would certainly always recommend a laser printer. Um, we've actually got a recommendation come through here. A Samsung M2026 laser printer. Peter says, I'm being very happy with my Samsung M2026 laser printer. Cheap and cheerful. Haven't had to replace the toner cartridge for about three years. So there you go. I can guarantee if that had been an inkjet printer, the cartridges would have been replaced countless times and there probably would have been lots of frustration and foul language while things try to get sorted out. I can still remember many years ago uh, trying to get a job application done before the deadline. I think it was due in the next day and I went to print the thing out and the printer just gave up on me. This was in the days before you'd submit submit them online. Um, you'd print them out, stick them in the post. Um, and that was really, really frustrating. Luckily, I actually had a spare printer because you know I just have spare rubbish hanging around the place uh, and we were able to get that sorted but it was a very very frustrating evening and you don't want that so there we go that's why your inject printer gets clogged up it dries out through underuse so use it regularly or better still get yourself a laser printer you can get color laser printers as well so if you want to print the color that's fine it'll cost you a little bit more um but definitely worth the investment okay so on to question number three microsoft is saying it has Improved is Edge Browser. Should I use this instead of Chrome? Now, I can remember when Internet Explorer was the browser that everybody used, and unless you were a bit nerdy and geeky and you used Firefox, because we didn't like um, Internet Explorer at all. But that was the browser that most people used, and it basically had the lion's share of the Internet. And that has changed over recent years, partly because Internet Explorer is no longer the standard default browser on Windows, it's Edge. Um, but Google Chrome basically changed the whole landscape for web browsers, and a lot of people now use uh, Google Chrome. And it's a fine browser. Uh, I've used it for many years. I tend to prefer Opera these days. The, the biggest criticism I have with Chrome is that it's very resource hungry, uh, and you only need a few tabs open, um, and it, it uses up the 
vast swathes of memory on your computer. And it doesn't seem to matter how much memory you've got. It seems to expand to fill the amount of memory available. So it is a bit of a resource hogger. But it is a good browser and you've got lots of extensions. And, you know, a lot of people now, the, the first browser they're trying to make things work in is Google Chrome. But the Google Chrome uh, engine, the Chromium engine, is now powering a lot of the browsers. It actually powers Opera, for instance. That's one that's built on the Chromium engine. Now, what Microsoft have done, obviously, they went their own way with Edge. They tried to revise Internet Explorer, come up with Edge as a competitor to Google Chrome. But, you know, we still didn't really like it. Um, in spite of Microsoft's claims that it was faster and lighter, and it might well have been we just didn't like it. And they made the decision that they would build Edge on the Chromium browser. So the latest version that's come down now with the new logo that looks a little bit like a blue Firefox logo, incidentally, um, is built on the Chromium engine. Now, um, I'm not using it at the moment, but I've been speaking to some other colleagues in IT who seem to be quite impressed with this new browser from uh, Microsoft. And some of its integrations with Microsoft Office are fantastic. So you can basically sign into the Edge browser and you don't need to sign into Office because it takes care of that for you. So in, in terms of the workflows there, it's pretty good. Uh, I understand it's less of a re resource hog than Chrome, so it may well be the time to reconsider. So you may well want to have a look. And I think the concerns about security and things like that are long since gone. Um, so I would say give it a go. Um, you know, uh, and change if you want to change. If you find that it works better for you, absolutely do that. If you're in the Google camp, if you use G Suite and Gmail and stuff like that, you might want to well stick with the uh, Google Chrome browser, which is absolutely fine. And there will be people who've always used Firefox to stick with that. Um, I, I do sometimes use that. Um, and I do sometimes use the Firefox Developer Edition as well. Um, and Opera apparently do a gaming version of their browser, the Opera gaming version, um, which um, I have seen used on occasion. So there we go. Lots of different options, lots of choice. That's kind of what we want. But I guess the answer is, if you want to use Edge, use Edge. I'm rabbiting on and, and rambling here. So, uh, oh, another... Um, a uh, comment that's come in, photos need to be printed on acid-free paper for the best quality. You can't achieve the best quality at home. Um, that is very, very true. Um, and that's one of the reasons, I think, why stuff you print at home just does not last. So I, I take the video, if you want to print a photograph out, it's because you want to keep it. It's a memento, it's a keepsake. So you want that to stay at good quality for as long as possible. Okay, so that's it for this evening. There are the three questions that we were looking at. I hope that that has been useful and helpful for you. We're going to go now and we'll be back again at seven o'clock next week. So do join us then. During the week, if you think of any questions, do send them to us on our Facebook page. Um, or you can check me out on LinkedIn and pop them on my LinkedIn page. Or you can send them through our website at redfez.co.uk and you can use the contact form for that. So... Have a good week, stay safe, and we'll see you next week.